I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurt, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. The book of Acts, chapter number 8. In desperation, I'll seek heaven. I want us to read from Pray verse number 5. Acts chapter number 8, verse number 5. Verse God. number 5, downwards. I read. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Now pay attention to this because a lot of people do not understand that our goal that we serve is the same God who has been doing every single thing. You see? The God that we serve is a God who opened the sea into two. It's the same God who caused fire to come down. It's the same God who made heavens and the earth. And in fact, it's the same God who made you and me. And this God that we serve in his hands is full of miracles. In his hands, he does not go according to the laws of nature. And in his hands, he does not follow the laws and the rules of man. Because this God from the beginning of time and before time he has been doing what he pleases. Hallelujah. So we are talking about a God who do not have limitations. We are talking about a God who does not report to anyone and he asks for no permission. Because there is no one above him for him to ask for any permission. And there is no one besides him for him to second guess himself. And that everything he does is pure, is holy, and is good. Sometimes the eyes of men might not understand what that God is doing. But that does not neglect the fact that that God knows what he's doing. But the Bible says this God is the beginning and the end. And all things that is between that. That means we go ourselves a champion. Are you hearing me? That means that we got ourselves a God that we have to be proud of. Because we get the last in the ring. And this God that we serve, 
he is the last one. He, when it comes to the power, he is the one on top. When it comes to authority, he's on top. Dignity is on top. Miracle is on top. He is the last God on top. And ladies and gentlemen, I've got news for you. He is your God. Amen. If that God is on top, then there is nothing that should stand between you and what God has spoken about you. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to see that. If you go to a place that someone is on top of that place, he could be a president, a king, a prime minister. When he comes into the building, everybody stands. Or oh, everybody kneels down. Because everybody understands where the power lies. Eh? If, if you know where the power is, you show reverence to that power. So the Bible says that the name of Jesus is lifted above every name. That the mention of that name, every knee, what? It bow. Why? Because they know where the power lies. Even the devil is a smart guy. He's not a fool. He's not a fool. Because he even know where power lies. He know who got the power. He's not an idiot. So when he hears the name of Jesus, he bows because he knows the consequences of not bowing. If you don't bow, in those days, if you don't bow to the king, then you want to lose your head. That means that You've had enough of your head on your neck. And you want that your head to be taken away. So when you see the king coming, you bow. The devil hear the name of Jesus and he bows. Amen. Today, let every sickness is bow. Let every disease is bow. Amen. Let the spirit of failure bow. In Jesus name. Let the spirit of confusion bow. In Jesus name. Let the spirit of cancer bow. In Jesus name. Let the spirit of poverty bow. In Jesus. The spirit of bankruptcy bow. Jesus, Let the spirit of disappointment bow. Jesus, Let the spirit of pain bow. Jesus. Let the mental health bow. Jesus. Let the infections in the blood running through the brains and causing. Untimely death. I say bow. Jesus. Because. All power. Belongs to the Lord. He said Philips went down the city of where? Samaria. And that started doing what? And preached Christ unto them. He started preaching Christ. You see, Philip understood that I don't have to come and preach.
teach you anything but Christ. Because Philip understood that if he gives Christ, in fact, he is giving all the ammunition. Because when you have Christ, then you have the one on top. You see, when Philip went there and he started praying for them to have money or anything, the devil could have come behind the scene and taken it away from them. Philip didn't go there and say, come on, you diseases be gone. Because if the Bible says, if that diseases go, if that spirits go, when the demons go, they go into the wilderness, they walk around, and after they are tired, they tell to themselves, come on, let's go and spy our previous building. Maybe it is swept and clean and nice, then we will go and enjoy it. And the Bible says that when the demon comes and look at the place and realize that that place is swept clean and tidy and it's beautiful and it's not rotten and the whole new bed, a whole new sofa, a whole new carpet, a whole new cooking, a whole new fridge, a whole new television, a whole new bathroom. That will just look around and say, wow, this is too good. This is too good. But the Bible says the devil will tell himself, if I stay here alone, I will be kicked out. So I have to go and get some other goons or other bad dudes, other minions to come and join me so that we will establish, we will be stronger here that no one will come and evict us. But when you know something about demonology, they work on in hierarchy. The bad demons, the crazy ones, the stronger ones are the top on the weaker ones. That means that the guy who was kicked will go for those who are stronger than him. So if he went for those who are stronger than him, that means that he will be the slave and the servant to those who are stronger than him. So let me explain to you. You had yourself a house. You got evicted from the house. Then you brought some bad dudes into the house. Huh? Because you don't want to be evicted from the house. But those you brought into that house, you have to be their slave. Now, make it make sense to me. That means that demon is prepared to be the slave and be abused and be treated horribly by the other demons only to make sure your life is destroyed. That the demon say, yes, I will be abused, I will be spat on, I will serve, I will wash all the dishes, I will clean everything, as long as you help me destroy the life of this person, I will be your slave. Now ask yourself, does it even make sense? Huh? Ask yourself, does it even make sense that the devil himself is ready to see the destruction of you 
And because of that, the devil is prepared to serve. Hello? The others to be abused in his own house because he wants to destroy you. Philip being so smart, knowing the spirit of God and the guidance and the fellowship of the spirit, he decided to give them what? Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when the demon is gone and the demon is coming back, when he come and spy, he will see that the place is not empty. But the place Jesus is there. So the demon will come and have a look and pick and look at the hole and check whether there is somebody in the house or not. So as soon as the demon come around, open the window. Huh? He opens the window and he put a stick to the window. And he just tried to peek into the house, into the room. He did not know that Jesus is sitting in the middle, in the, in the sitting room, eh? with his feet on the table, watching his television. The devil looked at Jesus and shout, Jesus, and ran away. Because he was not expecting that the champion is in that room. Amen. The God that we serve, he makes the devil tremble. Are you with me? He makes the devil pee on himself when he hear that he's coming. You think it's a lie. The Bible says one day the devil, Jesus entered into the tabernacle and in that church there was a man, a person in that church who has been tormented by the devil. As soon as Jesus went there, the devil started shouting, have you come here to destroy us? Have you come here? We know who you are. Jesus said, shut up. Shut up! They hear his name. His presence alone. Huh? They, they, it, it makes them go wild. Today, in the name of Jesus, every spirit, every familiar spirit, every demonic manipulation from the family, powers of witch doctors, powers of incantations, powers of demonic enchantations, knowingly or knowingly, that follows, that goes around you, that has been fighting you, that has been standing in your way. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of God and the fire of God to begin to burn them and break their strongholds in Jesus' name. Bible says and when Philip went there he did what and the people with one accord the Bible says uh, when, when he was preaching with Christ the people that was there they were with one what accord one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip So they listened to what Philip was saying. Hallelujah. Hear and see the miracles now, now which wait, he did. Wait. Wait. The Bible says they listened first to what Philip was saying. Look at somebody and say obedience. One more time. Obedience. And the Bible says they listen 
to what Philip was saying with one accord. Then what happened after that? Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now, they saw a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. A miracle was manifested there. And what sort of miracle was that? Verse 7. For unclean spirits. He says for unclean spirits. Crying with loud voice. Demonic spirits. Crying with loud, loud voice. voice. Now hold on. When you go to certain churches, what you hear is that they don't talk about the spiritual things. Okay? All what they tell you is that uh, God is good, let's have a cup of coffee and everybody goes home. Okay? All the best they can do Look at you and say, Oh, sister, brother, we will pray for you. Eh? That they have never even prayed for a mosquito or an ant before. That the prayer, there is no even power inside it. Because they themselves they don't even believe in the power of God. Huh? It's a formality. So the person will come to you, oh brother, what is wrong with your head? Oh, I got a very bad headache. So he'll come and say, let's pray. After he pray for you, so oh, we have paracetamol inside the room. Take, uh, take, take, take about two paracetamol. You'll be okay. And I myself. You know, I was in a church like that. Okay? I went to a church, and as I entered the church to preach, a lady came inside to the pastor and said, Oh, I, I cannot lead the worship today because I, I, got, I got flu. So the pastor just prayed for her. And the pastor said, Oh, look at my cabinet. I have some ibuprofen there. And I take two. All right, take two. And you'll be okay. I was standing there looking at the whole thing. I was so shocked. So I asked myself, did this pastor actually believe his prayer work or the Hebrew prophet which is going to work? Hello? Then, after the woman has left, I ask the pastor, say, man of God, what worked right now? Was it the prayer or the Ibu prophet? He looked at me and he said, oh, both was working. And I looked at him and I said, you know in your heart, you knew the Ibu prophet was working. You yourself, you know that it was the evil prophet, not your prayers. Because if it was your prayers, you will not tell him to go and take evil prophet after that. And you look at me. And he said, Our God work in a mysterious ways. And I look at him and say, it's true. By this kind of mysterious ways, we should have stopped the prayer and just give the book prophet. But as long as you pray it, that is a different, a whole new ball game. It's a different thing. The 
This is why when my wife come and say, I'm ill, I, say, I look at her, I say, God, what is it? God say, ah, that's nothing. I say, hey, go away. If I tell her, go away, she definitely know where she's going to. Do you understand? Hallelujah. But if I scold and go say, no, this is something that I know what to do. Amen. Amen. But if it's just nothing, you slap and your and your neck is just going down like that. And I say, go, what is this? Ah, the guy just uh, he, come on, go away. Now, if you want to go and take your buprofen, or you want to go and take your paracetamol, in fact, if you want to go and hang yourself, that's your business. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Like last time I was talking about. Every single thing that happens in the spirit, things that matters, that happens in the spirit, they come into the physical realm. Let me give you an example. Book of Hebrews says that Jesus was crucified before what? The foundation of this world. That means that Jesus was not crucified 2,000 years ago. Are you hearing me? It means that Jesus was crucified before God said, Let there be light. In fact, he was crucified before God decided to say that the world must exist. He was crucified so long time ago that God did not have time to say tohu wa bohu. Do you understand? Long time ago, before the world was made, then how come he was crucified just over 2,000 years ago? Because it has already happened in the spirit. Then, 2,000 years ago is just the formality. To show what has already happened in the spirit. If that is the case. That means. Things are happening in the spirit. That Christians are asleep. We are asleep and the devil and his minions are playing. They are playing with us because we are asleep. Oh, you don't believe it. The Bible says in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus came back, he said to the disciples, so you guys could not even wait upon me and pray for even an hour. Jesus said to them, pray ye so that you do not go into what? Temptation. That means... When you begin to pray in the spirit, things in the spirit are be, they start to be rearranging. Your prayer is not for right now. Your prayer is rearranging what is going on in the spirit. So that before you reach the point of your temptation, 
the hole that the devil has dug over there, the traps that the devil will put in front of you, that your prayer would have changed the path and fixed the way. The Bible says there were some demons there, right? Come on, read that place again. So. For unclean spirits. For unclean spirits. Crying with loud voice. Now listen, the demons, they started crying out like pigs. Pigs crying. Because there is a power coming. Do you know why they were crying? Huh? Do you know why? Reverend, do you know? If you build yourself a house, you bought yourself new stuff in the house. Huh? You plaster the house, new renovation, you put new kitchen, new bathroom, you put new ties, you, you make the whole place so beautiful. Thinking that now you are going to enjoy yourself and relax. All of a sudden, a bully came around and started beating you up. Someone just came there and told you, get away from the house that you have prepared. You'll be crying. You'll be shouting. You'll be screaming. Knowing well that the person who has come is powerful than you. crying and screaming and crying and shouting because you are being evicted from the place that you have worked so hard to have. The demons were crying, shouting, screaming, we don't want to go. We don't want to go. Philip said, in the name of Jesus, get away. Ah! Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says those are clean spirit. Crying with loud voice. They were crying with loud voice. Came out of many that were possessed. They came out. You see, they will cry, but they will come out. Amen. They will scream, but they will come out. Amen. In the name of Jesus, those diseases, those sicknesses, those powers. Today, I say, come out in Je the name Jesus of Jesus. Name. You will cry and you will go. Jesus name. You have no power here. The Bible says they were crying. Crying. Huh? Crying of their bankruptcy. Crying that now, where do we go now? Crying that oh, we, we spend all our money here. We spend all our time here. We came here to destroy this person. Now we got a chance to do that. Now he's telling us to go. And we cannot do anything but to go. They will cry. You think they won't cry? Huh? You, you lost 20 pounds on the floor and you were crying. The demon put his all life investment in that person to destroy. You will cry. The Bible says, and when they were crying, what happens? They... And many taken with palsies, the, the many, man, that, many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you remember I told you, those who have various diseases and sicknesses, as soon as the demon went, they were what? They were what? Healed. They were what? Healed. They were healed. 
Do you understand? When the demons went away, the healing came. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of people do not understand this. A lot of preachers don't know this. Because with them, they don't even believe that God still do miracle. They don't even believe it. The Bible says as soon as the demon went, they were crying and crying and crying and crying. I could see some, some fat demon, a fat one with a fat belly. Huh? A fat demon, he bought his own cutting of beer. Say, I'm going to stay in that hole and I'm going to I'm going to drink my beer and destroy this person. Huh? And put some cancer inside that body. So he went for shopping. He bought some pack of cigarettes. Huh? Which of people do not understand. When they go to the shop and buy cigarette and bring home to, to smoke. Huh? On the pack of the cigarette is written that this thing will give you cancer. It is written on it. They see it. They read it. They know that what they are smoking is a cancer making machine. Because it is written on the cigarette. And they know that cigarette smoking will give you cancer. But they still go to the shop, pay, take my, a cancer making machine, which is the cigarette, bring the cigarette home, take one, put on their lips, light it, and start smoking. Knowing well that that is giving the lung a cancer. They paid. Huh? They paid for their own destruction. Are you telling me are you telling me this person is not possessed? Yes. I'm totally possessed. Are you telling me there is no power behind this? Are you telling me that the demons have nothing to do with this? Somebody will just go and buy a few bottles of vodka. Bring it home. Before he bought that vodka, he had an issue with his liver. The doctor says that the liver have some hepatitis because of drinking. Huh? They know it. But they cannot stop drinking. I was praying for a man in Cyprus. The man says he has tried every single therapy to stop drinking. He says that, man of God, I know that this thing is killing me. 
And when the interpreter was interpreting from Greek into English for me in Cyprus, I he was crying. He was crying because he he got touched by what that man has been going through. The man say, I have given everything. And I want to tell you the fact I don't even believe in God. But my wife's friend said we should come to church because our church is having a seminar. And there is healing, there is God is doing a lot of things there. So the man said, You just look at the face of the wife. The wife also doesn't go, it's not a, she's not a Christian, it's only a friend. And the interesting thing is that the man said that they always thought that their friend was a strange person. So they always laugh at her. So when she said, look, why don't you come to church with me? She said that, he said that he and the wife, the first thing they started doing is bastard that they started laughing. And the woman just looked at them and told the wife, which is the friend, that what, what do you have to lose anyway? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? It's just a few hours of your time. What do you have to lose? When a man came, started praying for people, he said that he saw himself divided into two. That he can see he, he's himself standing by his side. And he said that as soon as he turned to see that he was looking at himself, he blacked out. And he fell. And when they brought the man in front, he started praying for him. The man started vomiting. And vomiting. And vomiting. Some green, slimy stuff. Coming out from him, coming out from him, coming out from him, coming out from him, coming out from him. Bishop, the whole room, the whole hall was so smelly. I see there is a dead person who has been dead for maybe few days and started decomposing. But you cannot, you, you cannot shy away from trying to find something to close your nose and cover everything of you. Let me tell you how bad it was that the next day the next day, we could not use that room for the service. It was so smelly that they moved everything outside in a tent. Even though the course, they, 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 they had a professional cleaners to come there. They removed the carpets from the front, but yet we couldn't use that place. Vomiting. And I 
first time I went there, he was sitting there, I asked him, I asked him that, do you still remember the taste of vodka? He said, I don't even know what it is. But when somebody opened a bottle of vodka far away from me, I can smell it and I want to puke. That it disgusts him so much that he does not even want to see the shape of the bottles. What am I saying? The powers. The evil spirits. Huh? Nowadays you see on the street a man, a man dressed in the woman attire and tell himself that he's a woman. You see people on the street. They have their legs they have their hands but they are living and sleeping on the street so what is happening so these people are drug addicts they are bombers useless people let them rot some of them the devil has put an anchor on their legs some of them they are carrying a whole lot of loads the bible says the thief he cometh only to steal to kill and to destroy the devil will not come Unless he wants to destroy you. Sometimes you might think that, oh, this is nothing, this is okay. London, I was praying in the church. Uh, I was ministering in the church and there was a woman there. And that woman came to church with her daughters. A bit old woman. Over 60. And she said that the doctors have decided to give her a heart bypass. Because she's having a heart issue. If they don't do that and put a heart pacer, her heart will stop and she will die. So they have to put something in that heart to help pump the blood. Then I look at that woman, I said, Before this thing started, for three nights, one day you were sleeping, God is telling me that you wake up. And when you woke up, in your room, there was a shadow in your room, a shadowy figure. And that shadowy figure, before you were about to shut up, say something. You felt that that shadowy figure put the hand right inside your mouth. 
and you fell back on your bed. She said, yes, I saw that, but that was a dream. I said, it was not a dream. You got up because you wanted to go to the bathroom. She said, yes. But I did not go, but that was a dream. I said, no, that was not a dream. And I told her that from that time, you started having some sort of a shock inside you. That you'll be there, you see that your heart is pumping and pumping and it's getting worse and worse and worse. That you feel it. As soon as I said that, the daughter just came and said, I can confirm this. Because all the tests that the doctors have done about her heart... There has been nothing that has shown that her heart has an issue. But they just have come to the conclusion that maybe she might need a support for the heart to pump the blood. So they want to put a system inside her, her heart space to force to pump those blood. I looked at the woman and I said, the whole idea here was the devil just want to give a doc, some doctor somewhere a problem. That as soon as they brought you there, started working on you, just kill you up and say, oh, the doctor has made a mistake on you. But today, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bishop, as long as I started praying for that woman. A woman with a bit of size. Over 65. In the middle of the people, she started peeing herself. She started weeing herself. You remember. The toilet that he got up, she got up in the night to go that she couldn't go. That we started coming out. Then she, 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 she just fell under the power of God. And she got delivered. We have been taking things for granted. This is why somebody will go to the doctor and say, Doctor, I have, a, I have a mental health issue. I have this. A young boy, a young girl who has never even been to the army is suffering from PTSD. How can someone who has not been to an army, never been to anything, bombardment, nothing, nothing, and now he's suffering from all the PTSDs? And the doctors tell you, oh, we don't know. Come on, take this pill. Come on, take that pill. Take this pill. Take that pill. Take this pill. Take that pill. Take this pill. Take that pill. Now the two things that happens here. And the next time you hear the person has went on the on the on the rooftop and jumped himself down. Or he has hanged himself. Or some of them. Will take a knife and go outside and start stabbing people and killing because they want to transform, transfer their pain into others. But no one tells you. Because they've been they've been told that there's nothing that they it can be done for them. And they told you, oh, this is science. It's science. It's science. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe you might be here in this room today. You might be listening to me in the YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are. One thing is.
for sure that in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ be relieved from every bondage of the enemy and every power of darkness every spiritual wickedness Every power that has caused the sicknesses to be metastasized inside your body. The cancer. The mental health issues. The confusion of your genders. I command them to be gone right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone in Jesus name. You are free. You are delivered. You are changed because of the blood of Jesus. Now from today, you are no longer bound. From today, you are no longer bound. From today, you are no longer bound because you are set free. For if the Son of Man shall set you free, you are free indeed. In the name of Jesus, be free. And go and come back no more. Father, we bless your holy name, Lord. Jesus, we exalt your holy name. Mighty God, we bless you, Lord. Now, Lord, you are faithful, you are holy, you are glorious, you are powerful, you are amazing. 